In order to better understand the world around us, we need to start to build onto some of our functions some more complexity, uh, some more nuances to help us understand uh, maybe a, a little bit more detail of what is happening. And one of the best ways we are learning to do that, or we will learn to do that, is by understanding what a polynomial function is. Basically, a polynomial function is a collection of cascading terms, um, where I have some a sub n, x to the n, another term, uh, some a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, and so forth, all the way down to a constant. Now, this n right here, those on the bottom, this this lower end, that's a subscript. And the way we say this is we say a sub n. And we just use that as a way to, differ, or to differentiate between the coefficients of successive terms. Now notice the exponents in each of the terms uh, in this function of the x. They're reducing by one as we continue all the way down. So I have four examples here of some, of, of some functions that I want us to try to get an idea, are they a polynomial function? And there's one more thing I guess I forgot too. These ends, we need to make sure they're non-negative integers. Um, we don't want to have a negative exponent within a polynomial function. It'll still be a function, but not a polynomial function. So based on that, I have four examples here, two of which are polynomial functions. First one, f of x. It is a polynomial function. All of the x terms are cascading down. I have x to the fifth, x squared, and both of those are non-negatives. It doesn't matter that I don't have an x to the fourth or x to the third. Those terms are just omitted. Or maybe in this case, those, the coefficients of those terms were zeros. So the only ones I'm left with is an x to the fifth term, x to the squared term, and some constant of five. So f of x is a polynomial function. G of x is not a polynomial function. And can you determine why? Well, I hope you realize or you remember that this term right here, what is that? Yeah, that's equals x to the one, one half. So the exponent of this particular x is not a non-negative integer. So g of x, it's a function, but not a polynomial function h of x. Well, h of x might be a little bit more described because it's not a collection of cascading terms. It's a, it's a product of terms. But can you use your imagination? We can multiply these out, can't we? And when we multiply them out, they become a collection of cascading terms. So if this were multiplied, it would fall in that form. So h of x is a polynomial function. j of x. What do you see about that one? Yeah, you kind of see that one as well, don't you? This x squared term right down here was in the denominator. So remember what, we, if we had some term like that, well, that's equals to x to the negative 2. So this one has a negative integer as an exponent. So j of x is not a polynomial function. Now, some of you guys might have been looking at it like, well, Willie, wait a minute. H of, or, uh, f of x has a square root of 2, x squared. Doesn't that disobey the rule? No, it doesn't. Because it's only the square root of 2, that's, or it's only the 2 that's underneath the square root. So square root of 2 is a coefficient to the x squared term. And that's completely fine. We can do that. So there's a couple other functions that we're going to see as we continue to move forward, we just want to kind of have a, an idea of what we call them and, and what they can become. So one function, f of x equals c. Well, that's a constant function. We can also have f of x equals, in the language that um, we could use on that one, sure. want to see if I wanted to use traditional slope intercept form variables or if I wanted to use a, x, b's, and c's. So this particular function, we know that one as a linear function. And we've worked with those. Um, this for it to be a linear function, we want to make sure the coefficient in front of this x is not zero, because if it was zero, what kind of function would we have? 
Yeah, we would just have a constant function. And another function that we've already kind of um, played with and kind of got the use, kind of got used to is a function in this form. And what kind of a function is that? Yeah, that's a quadratic. So all of those are polynomial functions, but those are the first three that we started to get used to. Constant functions, linear functions, and quadratic functions. So from here on out, we're going to start to build on those and look at functions that have degrees higher than x squared, such as x to the fifth, x to the tenth. And what do those graphs look like? And even though they might be complicated or look complicated, we're going to have the skills that we can graph those and we can have the idea of what those graphs actually mean.